Hello, welcome. In today's video, I'm going to showcase about 50 games running on Sadachi and discuss each one, sharing the best methods to play them. Additionally, I'll include a list in the description with all the mods used for each game. Before we begin, let's talk about our setup configuration. All the details about the PC are in the video description. The captures were made using Nvidia Shadowplay, with FPS capped, but always focusing on the best possible quality. The default resolution was used, but for games with a lot of aliasing or low rendering quality, I increased the resolution. I'll comment on this during the presentation of each game. Without further ado, let's start with our compatibility list. The first game tested was Animal Crossing New Horizons. Running the base version, without updates or DLCs, and no mods, the game behaved well, with no performance or graphical issues. In Astral Chain, with the latest version and the 60 FPS mod, there was some slowdown at times because the mod doesn't have dynamic FPS, which means that if the game drops below 60 FPS, there are noticeable slowdowns. In Bayonetta 2, without mods and at native resolution, the game ran almost perfectly, with smooth gameplay at a consistent 60 FPS. However, the cutscenes run at 30 FPS, without a mod to adjust this. If you want cutscenes at 60 FPS, you can use Simu, but this mod can cause visual issues, so it might not be worth it. Bayonetta 3 wasn't playable for some time, but in one of the last updates before Yuzu's demise, the game was fixed, and now it's possible to play from start to finish. Problems with audio delay or slowdown during cutscenes have been corrected. However, the visual quality at standard settings, combined with low FPS, makes the gameplay a bit lacking. Fortunately, in Sadachi, you can improve this by using the 900p mod and increasing the internal resolution to 2x, improving the visual quality. I also recommend the mod to run at 60fps, the improve LOD mod, and the remove film grain mod for a smoother experience. Check the description for more details on the mods, making sure you're using the correct game version for them to work properly. Bowser's Fury is also one of the games I've completed using Sadachi, and the performance is excellent from start to finish. To further enhance the visual quality, you can use mods to improve LOD and FOV. If you experience performance issues, you can disable FXA with a mod. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is a game originally released for the Wii U, so there's no doubt that it runs well on Sadachi. In Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, a trick to improve your experience is to unlock the FPS, as I did in this capture because the game has dynamic FPS, and this provides a smoother experience. If the aliasing still bothers you, you can increase the internal resolution. The capture was made with the default internal resolution, but on my 27-inch monitor, I can already notice slight aliasing, even with them say. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze has impressive visuals for a Nintendo Switch game and runs very well on Sadachi, without visual issues or FPS drops. Fire Emblem Engage may have issues completing the tutorial, so if that happens, use OpenGL until you finish that part, then switch back to Vulcan. The game might have some slowdown when compiling the first shaders, but after one or two battles, the gameplay is smooth. Fire Emblem Three Houses might also have issues with Vulcan, but it's playable. I chose to capture it with OpenGL to show that you can still have smooth gameplay without many hiccups. Fire Emblem Warriors, the music game developed in partnership between Nintendo and Koei, might have problems when compiling initial shaders or using a special attack for the first time, but after that, the gameplay is smooth with no other issues. Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes uses the Switch hardware inefficiently, with a lot of aliasing issues. The solution I found was to use a 2x internal resolution, along with Sadachi's native MSA, for a more enjoyable experience. During gameplay, there were no significant problems. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, originally developed for 3DS and Wii U, came to the Switch with several improvements. In Sadachi, you can use mods to run the game at 60 FPS, further improving the experience. There are no major visual problems with this game, which is another title I'm almost done with. Its sequel, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, is a bit more problematic, showing stuttering issues in the early parts of the map. The game also has quite low visual quality and unstable performance with major FPS drops, probably due to poor optimization by Koei. To avoid further issues, I didn't risk increasing the resolution. Kirby and the Forgotten Land is one of the games that offers the best experience on Sadachi. On the original Switch, 
There's a blur effect when the camera zooms out to save resources, but you can disable it with mods in the emulator. Additionally, you can disable dynamic resolution and unlock the frame rate to 60 FPS to fully enjoy this excellent game. Kirby's Return to Dream Land is a decent remake of the game originally released for Wii. This remake has texture and graphical quality improvements. When playing on Sadachi, there will be no compatibility or performance issues. If you prefer to play on Dolphin, you can further improve the visual quality with texture packs. To enjoy Kirby Star Allies with the best quality, use the 60fps mod, which is compatible with any game version. The game runs without graphical or visual issues, even with the mod applied. Luigi's Mansion 3 has had lighting issues in Yuzu for a long time, but now those problems have been fixed. On PC, the experience will be even better because there are mods to run the game at 60 FPS and disable dynamic resolution for the best possible visual quality. These mods work for both the 1.0 and 1.4 versions of the game. Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope is still challenging to emulate, with flickering objects in the game that make the experience unpleasant and potentially problematic for those with epilepsy or light sensitivity. These issues make gameplay unstable and uncomfortable for long gaming sessions. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe also offers a great experience on PC, with the option to remove or enhance FXA, improve the visual quality of the tracks, disable dynamic resolution, and even enable 60 FPS for those who want to play in split-screen mode. In the description, you will find a list of mods for the latest version of the game. Mario Party Superstars, even without mods or custom settings, provides hours of fun. If you're particular about aliasing, you might need to increase the resolution to 1.5 or 2 times the native resolution for a smoother experience. Mario vs Donkey Kong, the remake of this classic, works without issues on Sadachi, without graphical or performance glitches. Metroid Dread is another game I recommend running with the 60fps mod for greater immersion. This game suffers from aliasing since it doesn't have native filters for it, so it's a good idea to use an internal resolution multiplier of at least 2x and apply MSA to improve visual quality. Metroid Prime Remastered had initial stuttering issues when loading new areas, but those problems have been fixed. I recommend using mods to improve LOD and increase FOV for a richer experience. Additionally, the internal resolution was adjusted to 2x to reduce aliasing. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, another game using Koei's engine, might have issues compiling shaders in the early parts of the game, but these issues are corrected after a few minutes of gameplay. I recommend using the mod to run at 60fps, as an action game like this needs a higher frame rate for a smoother experience. New Pokemon Snap runs smoothly and provides fluid gameplay without significant graphical glitches. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, a remake of the Wii U game, runs very well, with a stable and pleasant visual experience. As it's a game with mostly 2D backgrounds and some 3D elements, it doesn't have notable performance issues. Paper Mario The Origami King runs without graphical issues on Sadachi. If you notice any distortion or discoloration, it could be an HDR incompatibility during recording and not something that will affect your gameplay. Pikmin 4, developed with Unreal Engine, a notoriously difficult engine to emulate, works well on Sadachi. Although I captured the game with the original resolution and frame rate, there are mods that allow you to run the game at 60 FPS with various graphical improvements. The full list of mods is available in the description. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond is a lightweight remake with mods that allow the game to run at 60 FPS. However, it's recommended to set the internal resolution to at least 2x to reduce aliasing. The game is optimized and should work well on various devices. Pokemon Legends Arceus, which introduced a semi-open world to the Pokemon franchise, has mods to improve sky rendering and visibility distance. There are also texture packs to enhance the game's visuals. However, these mods can be hard to find, as Nintendo tends to take down fan-made content. Pokemon Sword and Shield offer a good experience on Sadachi. To speed up the pace of the game, you can unlock the FPS in the emulator, which also makes battles faster. There's a mod for 60 FPS, but it can make some animations too fast. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the latest games in the series, might have minor issues like vertex explosions and low FPS in cities, but they perform well in open areas. If you want a faster experience, you can unlock the FPS to speed up the game. 
Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee also run well on Sadachi, although they might need an increased internal resolution to avoid aliasing. You can play the game from start to finish with good performance, and it can also be sped up with a mod for 60 FPS. Poking Tournament DX, a fighting game with Pokemon developed by the team behind Tekken, has smooth gameplay and good visual quality. You shouldn't encounter any issues playing it on Sadachi. Finally, one of the best ways to play the first Red Dead Redemption on PC is with Sadachi. Although the mod to run the game at 60 FPS doesn't ensure a constant frame rate, you can play through the game without major issues. The overall experience is enjoyable, even if some moments might have performance drops. Shin Megami Tensei V used to have issues running on Yuzu and still faces challenges on Sadachi. Although the game doesn't have critical frame drops, vertex explosions can be a nuisance for more demanding players. Splatoon 2 has very good graphical quality and doesn't have significant issues when played on Sadachi. Additionally, you can use motion sensors for aiming, such as with the DualShock 4 or compatible controllers. Splatoon 3 can be more problematic, showing frame drops and even flickering objects or defective edges. Super Mario 3D World, a remake from the Wii U, has smooth gameplay without significant graphical issues. However, if you're only interested in this game, you might prefer playing it on CMU, as it has more modest hardware requirements and doesn't offer major improvements on the Switch. Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which had initial issues on Yuzu, now works perfectly on Sadachi, allowing for continuous gameplay with excellent graphical quality, even at native resolution and without mods. Super Mario Odyssey, considered by many to be the best game on the Switch, can have mods to improve graphical quality or disable certain features to make it lighter. However, there can still be some aliasing, which can be reduced with improvements in the FXA system or by increasing the internal resolution. Super Mario RPG, the remake of the original Super Nintendo game, runs smoothly on Sadachi, with excellent graphics quality and no issues completing the game. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate also works well, even with 8 CPU-controlled characters. There are slight delays due to the large number of shaders for each character. In story mode, there have been reports of crashes after several battles, but I can't confirm if this issue has been resolved. The Witcher 3, while better on its PC version, runs adequately on Sadachi. With 30 FPS fixed, it could be an option for those who only have the Switch version. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 performs poorly natively, and this lack of performance is also reflected on Sadachi. Even with mods to improve graphics quality, achieving decent gameplay can be challenging. In contrast, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has better visuals and performance, despite being a more recent game. There are mods to further enhance the graphical quality, and even play at 60 FPS. Yoshi's Crafted World, which worked well on Yuzu, seems to have regressed on Sadachi. I couldn't get it to run with Vulcan, requiring the use of OpenGL, which still offers decent graphics but with some performance issues. Before we move on to the Legend of Zelda franchise games, if you enjoy this type of video, please give it a like to encourage our work. Testing more than 50 games is a significant challenge, and if this is your first time on the channel, consider subscribing for more content every week. Let's start with the first game in the series, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Although it's preferable to use Simu for this game due to its mods, more customization, and lower hardware requirements, Sadachi can also run it. On Sadachi, you can enable a mod to run the game at 60 FPS, but this frame rate is not dynamic, meaning if the game can't reach 60 FPS, you might experience slowdowns. The second game is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Despite being another remake, the Switch version has some limitations, like blur to mask the lack of draw distance and a 30 FPS cap. However, on Sadachi, you can address these limitations with community mods. Finally, we have The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This is one of the most challenging games to emulate, requiring a powerful CPU to run decently, as even on the original console, it can drop to 20 FPS in certain areas. There are several mods for this game, but unfortunately, I can't share specific details because Nintendo has blocked many videos we've posted. However, I can tell you that version 1.2 seems the most stable, and some older mod configurations might offer better performance than the current ones. I hope this list has been helpful for you. Thanks for your audience, and see you in the next video.